Hello and welcome to um, this presentation and thanks for joining in. Um, a quick introduction to myself. I'm Thierry Delafontaine and I work uh, in the Institute of Embedded Systems at the University of Applied Science in Zurich um, here in Winterthur. And today I'm going to talk to you about a secure boot concept for the Zinc Ultrascale Plus. So what it is about, um, Zinc Ultrascale Plus is a SOC and it has a lot, a lot of um, um, different features implemented. Um, here you can see the, uh, the default or, or no, the provided the block diagram from the Xilinx website. And you can see um, we have here multiple processors. So we have an application processing unit, a real-time processing unit, a graphics processing unit, and we have also an FPGA part and programmable logic all here. And but what you're interested in is the configuration and security unit. So this chip has a lot also um, security features implemented. We have um, hardened cores for um, hashing, for authentication, so RSA for AES. And, and they also yeah, provided a lot also in, in terms of security. And this is quite interesting because with uh, such a um, uh, wide range of features, and this chip can be implemented in a, in, in a wide range of applications. And today, um, security is not optional anymore. It is um, a necessity to have a secure product. And today I want to talk to you um, about how we proceeded and, and which uh, framework we used um, for to, to, um, um, yeah, to do this reference implementation. And then also talk um, a little bit about the boot process and how the and authentication encryption works um, on this device. And yeah, so, so um, we used the PSA framework from ARM and PSA stands for Platform Security Architecture and um, basically consists of these four steps. And we have first um, the analyze step and what we do in the analyze step is we have our product idea and we analyze our product and to, to understand each different part of our whole um, product. And with that, we can see where um, possible threats can apply to. And also, um, what assets do we have? What, what can be interesting for others? And then we can also have a look at our um, opponents. What could be possible um, um, adversaries? What, what resources they have? And, and with that, we can derive security requirements for our product we need, um, we need to have. And then in the second step, um, we go with our security, security requirements and, and look into the market and, 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 and go and, 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 have, and see what, what is there and, and basically translate our security requirements to speci specifications which then can be implemented. And yeah, the third step is, um, I think, self-explanatory. So basically we implement what we specified before and we implement also the, the, the product itself. And in the last step, um, we, we um, certify our product. So yeah, we, ba we basically test um, our, our product to our requirements we set before and if it, if it holds these requirements. And this is basically um, the procedure we, we, we used and um, in our case, we didn't have um, a product, a specific product, and we didn't have, um, we didn't look into the, 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 the whole range of, of, of devices or security devices available. We focused us on, on Zinc Ultra Scale Plus and what it offers and where could possible threats apply and also um, what, what features it, it offers to count those threats. And um, yeah, and so um, first um, I want to talk um, about the boot process in, the, in a general view and, and what, what, it, what it offers and what possibility it offers. And then um, later on I will go into more detail how the decryption and authentication process works because I think it's quite interesting how they, they did it or they implemented it in this chip. So um, the boot process um, can be um, divided into four steps and the first two steps um, are, are not that interesting for us because the code 
in, in those first uh, first steps um, is, is executed from ROM. So it's on the device itself and can't be changed. Um, the first step is basically the power management unit which sets up the power management. And then in the second step, um, we do the, the, the security unit uh, boots up and loads. So our, loads our first um, external image and, and, and reads um, the first part of our image which, which has um, information what, how we want to proceed in the following boot process. And this is the interesting part then in stage three where the first um, image is loaded. So the first stage bootloader. And, and right before there, um, we set um, if we want to boot secure or not secure. And, um, and we leave now the unsecure part aside and focus on the secure part. And basically we have two choices there. And the first choice is to secure in the encryption only mode. And as the name says, the encryption only mode um, forces us to use encryption only. So the image is encrypted only. And this gives us kind of, um, yeah, this, in my opinion, it, it isn't the intended use because it, it, uh, it, it, it narrows our possibilities. And, and maybe some of you think, well, um, encryption is nice to have, but um, where is the authentication? And um, this is also covered because we use ASGCM, so the Galois counter mode, uh, which also has also an integrated um, authentication. But we are forced to go with encryption and the authentication is in the encryption itself. And because, or, or why is this, um, yeah, why is this not intended uh, use case I will talk a little bit about later. And yeah, the second, um, or the second mode we can choose is um, the root of trust uh, mode. And in the root of trust mode, we enforce authentication. So we enforce authentication to RSA and encryption can be optionally also um, active. So we can also encrypt or decrypt our image. And, and basically from there on, we have um, our image authenticated or our software is authenticated and we can load and all, all those uh, following um, images are authenticated so we can load further um, our trusted firmware and um, U-boot or whatever bootloader we use and also um, the bit streams can be authenticated or encrypted and 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 the, the following executing firmware so of the first stage bootloader may be use U-boot as the second stage bootloader so basically beginning of the uh, stage four we are responsible ourselves to proceed with the secure uh, boot flow. So if we start then uh, Linux as an operating system and or, or any other software, we're basically responsible ourselves. So, and now um, I want to uh, switch to um, uh, the part where I explain um, a little bit more the, the encryption and authentication and, and and the key usage is, is very important in, in such um, cases. Because um, as I said before, we have um, two different um, um, encryption methods or, or cryptography methods. And the first one is AES. And as a quick, um, um, yeah, quick introduction to cryptography, um, AES is a symmetric uh, method um, which uses only one key for encryption and decryption. So um, anyone in possession of this key can uh, generate um, encrypted, um, uh, encrypted images or encrypted data or can de decrypt any data encrypted with this key. Then on the other hand, we have RSA uh, in this chip used as um, an authentication method. Um, and RSA has the advantage that this, it, it is an asymmetric method. So we, use, we have two keys. And we use one key for one part of the operation and the second key for the other part of the operation. So here um, we use the secret key for, uh, for encryption and the public key for decryption. And it gives us the opportunity or the possibility to have our secret, secret key in a secure storage or secure environment and, 
um, basically anchor or, or authenticate our image and generate the signature and then give the signature with the public key to, to a customer and, and he can't generate an, another, um, uh, another signature for another image he, he, he produced himself. So this public key it can be openly available because um, you need the secret key to generate another image. And, and um, before we proceed any further, um, I talked shortly about the image itself, how it's structured. And we have here um, um, the, the image and it consists of different parts. Um, I, I already talked about the boot header. Basically the boot header contains all the information for the security unit. Um, how we want to boot, which boot mode we choose and also the keys for the proceeding uh, um, for the proceeding steps. Then in the partition header we have um, the information about the different images. So where does the image start in this, um, in this uh, bigger boot image? Um, how long it is um, and also uh, specific keys for the different parts and then of course uh, the images itself uh, themselves and so now um, the boot um, flow so we kind of uh, now start um, off the stage 2 and we have basically two key storages in our device we have um, a battery backed RAM. So this is a, a RAM device which um, is secure so you can't read it directly, you can only write it and uh, it can't be only read by the hard, hardened uh, uh, cryptography core. And the battery backed RAM uh, needs a battery as a backup um, else um, the, the content is uh, deleted and it can be only used for the AS key. And there you can see, um, so no, the, the, other, uh, the other storage is the eFuse and that's a permanently, um, uh, a permanent um, storage which can only be written once. So if you write your key, you can't change it anymore. And that's, um, that's uh, one of the drawbacks of the encryption only mode because um, we are forced to use the eFuse. So basically if you use encryption only mode and you uh, you, 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 your key is um, your your key is leaked, and yeah, you can basically throw your device away and, and create a new one with a new key. And and um, in the if use we have uh, pl the place for both, so we have we can store the AS key and we store we can store the RSA key and the RSA or the RSA hash. We, why is the hash? I will talk about later, and um, but um, we have. In the EFUS, we have placed for two RSA hashes, and this gives us further freedom, and, and we can invalidate one or the other. Yeah, but for the AS key, we have only um, placed for one key. Um, and yeah, so basically, we have um, uh, these things, and we start here um, with the boot header. So we load our boot header in, and in the boot header, we have um, two RSA keys. We have a primary RSA. We have a secondary RSA and we have um, the signature of the secondary RSA which is, was created with the secret primary RSA key and then we have the head signature and then uh, further information. So basically in the first step we take our RSA and compare it to the hash stored in the device. If we wouldn't do this step and um, someone could um, could um, exchange this RSA key with his own and then all the rest which is authenticated with the secret with the secret key so this is the public key in here with the secret key he could he could um, create his own image and uh, yeah authenticate or sign them with his secret key and then exchange the public key with his public key and then everything would be okay and the device would boot so we have to ensure that the correct um, RSA key is used Thus, we compare that, and if we if uh, this comparison is true, we know well it's our key and uh, which is used for further authentication. So now we can authenticate the secondary key, and and with that um, 
we know that the secondary key is also the correct key we intend to use. And this uh, system of using two um, keys it gives us the freedom to use uh, different keys for each, um, for each um, part of the image. So basically we're not um, forced to use only this one key. And if we do this with the secondary key, we are sure, well, this is our key. And then we can use this key to authenticate um, the boot header and the partition header with the signature um, in, in the boot header. And yeah, so, so of course we do not um, do the, the, uh, the authentication over the whole boot header image only of a part. So, and optionally now we can also use encryption. So if our image is encrypted, we can decrypt the image and there um, are also um, systems which we can use to um, reduce our key usage. So because we have only place for one key, uh, only um, uh, the capacity of one for one key, um, it is, yeah, we kind of need to have another possibility to reduce this key. We don't want to use the key for, uh, for, every, for every image or every part because uh, usually we say that we want to use one key for one thing only. And therefore, and we can use the operational key, and the operational key is an, an encrypted key in the boot header, which is encrypted with our master key in the device itself. So we encrypt, we decrypt this key, and then we can store it in the, in the cop, the cop is uh, the key update register, which uh, is the register where we can provide uh, custom keys to our um, decryption hardware. And after this step, we can decrypt our partition header and store it to memory for further use. And basically we do that with um, every um, other image. And thus we can ensure that um, every image is authenticated and, and, and also um, decrypted with its own key. So for each image and each um, so for each image we have a, a, an RSA, a secondary RSA and an AES key. And yeah, and so basically it's, it's nice to have these features, but um, we don't want to only use um, the, the cryptography hardware um, only in the boot mode. So, um, and, and, and that, that's the nice thing on this device. So we can also use the uh, cryptography uh, hardware also in the operating system like Linux. And that's also uh, one part we did, we, um, we made some, uh, and we made some examples how to use it with uh, uh, the crypto API from Linux, and the result the result is a, a secure boot reference design which is openly available under this link. And if you're interested in it, or if you want, um, or if you have a project, and um, uh, take a look at it and use whatever you need. And we hope that it helps you to um, have to quicker set up a pro uh, a project with. Um, with secure boot implemented and yeah that's basically it so i thank for uh, your attention and i will be available for any questions afterward and yeah i wish you a nice day bye